I would really love to hear from you in the comments if you're someone who sets New Year's resolutions or goals or any of those sort of things because I feel like there are some people who are really against them and some people who live by them. And I'm sure there are plenty of people in between. At least when I was a kid and like when these like parts of my brain were being formed. Most of the goals revolved around like optimizing our bodies to fit a certain standard. And this day and age, this day and age, and at this point in my life, my goals for the year are not about that at all. There's so much more about like personal development or building a community or doing good for people and planet. And that's where my goals are like created. But I can understand why some people hate the idea of these resolutions. A, because you know, like I just said, the past and how they were used, but also because the idea that you can only recite yourself once a year is really silly and not true. However, for me, the beginning of the year always signifies time to start over and I really thrive. I really thrive in the new year. So I personally am someone who sets goals. And that's really the reason I wanted to make this video uh, because I think there are so many goals that revolve around sustainability that are perfect to reset in the new year. And there are some new goals that I'm setting for myself this year, some goals I set for myself last year that I was really successful in surrounding sustainability, um, community, activism, all those sort of things. And I thought it would be cool to talk about some things that you could maybe use or to get the, uh, the wheels turning about things that you could set yourself up for 2024 to have a greater impact on the planet in a positive way. So let's get into it. I do set specific goals for myself every year, right? I do have smart goals as we call them, um, things that can be measured, that are tangible, you know, all those sort of things. But I also pick a word of the year every year. And I would say that's so much more important than any of the other goals I set for myself. Pretty much guides like the way um, I work, the things that I do within my work, and also the things I do within my free time. So I think my word for 2024 is going to be create. And that is because in 2023, I really found a magic and a, an important form of purpose, I guess, through creating. I've always been someone who wanted to try so many creative outlets. Uh, obviously my job has an aspect of being creative to it, but I've always wanted to try ceramics. And finally in 2023, I did. And I think that just kind of opened the floodgates for me wanting to make stuff. Now I just want to try like stained glass and I want to try hufted needling and I want to try embroidering. I mean, I've always wanted to do embroidering. That led to me making like all of my holiday decorations this year. I think creating is something that like a lot of our inner selves need, like maybe what we're built for to do things with our hands. That kind of led me down a path of discovering how much more important creating is for building community, connecting with others as a form of resistance kind of to our system, which is like a really big conversation. In today's day and age, like hobbies are looked at as a waste of time or they're silly, or we literally are pushed to the brink of not having the time energy to give to hobbies because we are working to survive under the economy that we're under right now. And my point in telling you all this is that I think that a good habit under living sustainably is to embrace hobbies to embrace being creative, to embrace creating community, creating relationships. And obviously this channel was built on anti-consumerism. That is like my, my whole, my big message, it's my biggest passion in life is anti-consumerism. And my friend Jess on TikTok actually started a series this, uh, holiday season called create over consume. And I think that in and of itself is the habit that I think I would love to see more people form, but the time and attention you put into creating something is so much more meaningful and fulfilling than putting the time and attention and also money into consuming things. And when you make something yourself, it holds so much more value. Uh, and that can't be understated. You cannot understand it until you do it and you can still fulfill fill that gap with creating. And so I think a cool habit to start would be to create over consume. I think that's a really great habit. And it's kind of my whole, my whole guiding light for 2024, because my word is going to be create and we'll see what that, what comes of that. But
I start off with a really big one because that's my, my, like I said, like my big guiding thing for 2024. It's like what I really care about and I wanted to talk about it. But this one is a little bit more simple and a little bit more basic and something that I think if you haven't already formed this habit, it's a really good habit to form. And it's bringing the big five. I've been, I've heard it called before the big four, but I think really there's a big five. And for me, basically what this means is remembering your reusables. There are types of plastic that we really can't avoid. Like, am I gonna not buy strawberries because they come in plastic? At some point in my life, the answer would have been yes. But at this point in my life, the answer is no. I will try to support local, but I'm not gonna give up something just because it comes in plastic. Because to me, the entire point of not buying the strawberries would be to tell the company that I don't support what they're doing. But that's not entirely true, especially if they're locally grown strawberries. I don't not support that farmer and what they're doing. I just would rather not it be in plastic. So the better thing to do there would be to ask the farmer to find different packaging, not to just boycott the farm altogether. That sort of plastic is really hard to avoid, but there are five different things that are really easy to avoid if you just bring your own. And getting into the habit of bringing your own is what we wanna build. So that would be a straw, plastic utensils, cutlery, a cup, a water bottle, and takeout containers. Um, you can keep those things in a bag, or if you're leaving the house and you know you're going out to eat, you can take the things that you would need for that occasion. But those are types of plastic that are really easy to avoid, that are actually some of the most commonly littered things in our landfills, in our oceans, and just in general, on the ground. So if you can get in the habit of remembering those five things, if you can build that habit, it's a really good goal for 2024. Now the habit that I really got into in 2023 um, and it kind of fell short a little bit when summer hit because I hate being outside, but it's volunteering. So I used to think uh, like basically my role as an activist would be to basically go to events, community events that have to do with sustainability, meeting people, building community, that is so important. I also used to think like supporting local businesses or sustainable businesses, that's really important. The farmer's market, like all these things are important, but honestly, like what I've realized over the last year is that giving your time to bettering people and the planet is actually a much, much, much better use of our time than the other things are. Like we had a freeze this year and everyone's trees were down and harming our power grid and just all sorts of chaos that came from the winter storm. So like volunteering my time to my neighbor who isn't able to take care of all of that on their own and helping them out. Um, I've done invasive species removal this year. I've done trash cleanups, of course, those are very common. I volunteered at my library to help organize our seed library. I volunteered with this organization called Keep Austin fed. They do what a lot of like what Imperfect Foods does, but for stores that don't use Imperfect Foods and we'll go get groceries that are not able to be sold anymore and donate them to families in need. So I volunteered so many hours this year and what I've learned is that it makes more sense for me to give my time in those ways if I care about sustainability, if I care about people, than to just go to a local coffee shop on the weekend, right? It kind of makes the free time that we're spending more impactful. And that definitely is like a mindset shift and a habit to create, so I think we should do more of that. If you do not already have habits that make the way you shop more sustainable, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. Here are the two things you need to do. Number one, the first habit is the answer is no. When you want something, the answer is no. The default is not yes and talk yourself out of it. The default is no and you need to figure out how to talk yourself into it. So I've talked before about questions you can ask yourself before you buy something and that's so important because we don't wanna be unconsciously consuming things. We wanna consider all of the questions before we do. But I think one of the habits is the default answer is no. And the second habit that you could create to have more sustainable shopping habits would be a purchasing waiting period. So for me, even if it's a day, honestly, even a day really changes the way my brain thinks I need something. But getting in the habit of saying no when you wanna buy something and getting in the habit of never doing an impulse knee jerk, like just clicking buy now on something, those are two habits that are really going to help you on an anti-consumerism journey and this year, I think, I think, listen, if I hold true to some of what I know my goals are gonna be, I am going to try to spend very, very, very little money in 2024 because I would like to prop up my retirement account as much as possible. And so I think I'll be sharing a lot more about how anti-consumerism can help us pay off debt or save money and those sort of things because anti-consumerism helped me pay off all my student debt. I think if we could get in the habit of doing those two things, we would be in better financial places and we'd also be in better places when it comes to sustainability and the environment. Okay, now you may have heard of composting like a lot, like cause it's 
something that's like pretty commonly I feel like understood and known about and thought of to be important these days. But if you have not already created a method and a habit of composting, I think you really should. And the reason that it gets talked about so much is because it is really, really important. In some studies, in Project Drawdown, the number one way that you and I can help impact climate change is wasting less food. So when we talk about composting as a habit that is sustainable for 2024, it might be the most important habit you build all year. And so if you don't already have a way of composting, I actually have a video and I'll link it up here, of different ways you can compost. I collaborated and got a lot of my different creator friends to talk about ways that they compost. So go check out that video if you need a method for yourself. But that should 100% be a habit that you are trying to form in 2024. If you haven't already, like I said, it might just be like the most important thing you do. And another habit that I am trying to build that I am working on is getting in the habit of using up food scraps. There's a, a girl called Carly from Plant You. She has a whole series on ways to reduce food waste while cooking. It's called like Scrappy Recipes. And then one of my best friends, Catherine, she also has a series where she uses food scraps and recipes. And I absolutely am trying to build that habit because I'm not very creative in the kitchen. Okay, I basically do the same stuff over and over and over again. Um, but they, I do wanna build the habit of not seeing food scraps as just food waste. So things like when you make almond milk, like almond pulp. I recently made a video where I use them to make stuffed mushrooms and it was, it was quite good if I do say so myself. So I think building those habits of composting and getting creative with reusing your food scraps instead of just composting them are both ways that we can have huge impacts on the planet, but also on our wallets. So we'll work together on the reusing food scraps one. <laughs> Gotta get a little creative there. So this is a habit that I've had my whole life because I live in Texas. Well, not even just Texas. I live in the United States. Fuck, I live on planet Earth, okay? Car first when you're trying to get somewhere is just the default. It's just the habit. It's the way I have lived for years and years and years. And so it makes sense that when I need to go something, my head says, get in the car. The most sustainable thing about this house, in my opinion, well, before we put solar panels on it, was the walk and bike score when we bought this house. It was a big deal to us that our house was walkable and bike and so I've been trying to break the habit of car first ever since we moved here of uh, relying on biking and walking and even the buses in the cases that we're going downtown. But I think that's also a beautiful time to talk about my like my mindset of do your best and advocate for the rest. Because even if you don't have access to bike lanes or sidewalks or buses for that matter, um, you can always advocate for them. So see if your city council, if there's a member on council who like is really passionate about transportation, um, you can also see if there are working groups or committees in your city council. Like we have several working groups that citizens can join and advocate for different types of transit in your city. Yeah, there, there are so many different ways to get involved in it, but the habit is what we're talking about and habit of not thinking car first is what I'm working on and I would encourage you to do as well. You have to build the habit of checking secondhand first, but not only checking secondhand first, because this whole channel has been built on that habit, okay? I hope that I've encouraged you to build that habit. But the next one I want you to check is your buy nothing group. The habit, the habit of checking your buy nothing group regularly is so helpful. And not just so you can obtain things, but also so you can be a part of a community. A buy nothing group is one of the easiest ways to feel a part of a true community. Because I live uh, in Austin, which is a city of incredibly diverse people in terms of like people of color, in terms of race, gender expression, sexualities, but especially where I live um, on the east side of Austin, it's very diverse in terms of socioeconomic status. And so people in my, in my Buy Nothing group are often asking for things that I have the complete ability to be able to help them with. And um, so it's been really helpful because I am able to give to my community in ways that like I otherwise wouldn't, but I'm also able to then I feel like whatever I put back into the group, I often get out. I literally was talking to my sister on the phone one day about how she bought this insert for her window so her cats could go out on her balcony. And she was like, you should think about getting one for Tippy." And I was like, okay. I went online, it was like four or $500. And I was like, <laughs> Absolutely not. And literally the next day, someone was giving one away for free on my Buy Nothing group. Being in the habit of staying up to date on what's happening in your Buy Nothing group is a really good one for 2024. I would highly recommend if you're not already part of your group, joining it and then uh, being an active member. 
So I have a lot of friends who are not vegan. Um, I have a lot of friends who are not even vegetarian. And what I've noticed about them is even though they're not vegetarian or vegan, um, they still eat a lot of meat-free meals. Like again, I hosted a party a couple days ago. It was completely vegan and no one had any qualms about it. It was all fine. But um, I do notice that my friends who even aren't vegetarian or vegan, a lot of times their default is no meat. I think that just trying to build the habit of meat-free being the go-to um, instead of the exception would be an incredible habit to build. And I feel like we've been talking about plant-based diets for so long and I still truly, like to my core, believe that a plant-based diet is not only better for the planet, but it is going to be necessary that we drastically reduce the amount of meat that we consume to sustain life on this planet with the amount of people we have. It's vital that we do that. And people will come for me when I say that, but I'm just telling you. Okay, monitoring where your money goes sometimes can be a set it and forget it thing. So right now, like one of your goals for 2024 could be to divest from big banks. Get your money out of the big banks, like whatever you do, if you go to a credit union, if you go to Aspiration, highly recommend Aspiration. If you use Wealthfront, which is another like place that is my high yield savings account where I put my money. Whatever you do, just please, please, for all that is good in the world, Get in the habit of not having your money in big banks um, because they're funding the climate crisis. Not only do they fund oil drilling, they fund fossil fuel expansion, meaning that since the Paris Climate Agreement, they have invested billions of dollars in more fossil fuel projects. And that's not something you wanna be supporting. They also support awful unethical things like military weapons and arms deals and just like prison labor, all, all sorts of wild things that you would never wanna put your money towards. If you have investment accounts, if you have retirement accounts, even if you have savings accounts, whatever it is, monitoring where that money is going and what it's funding um, is a good habit to build. And then in addition to that, that monitoring where your money is going. I think keeping up with places that you spend your money and what they support is also really important. I think we've seen that with the um, genocide happening in Israel, Gaza, Palestine. We live in the society that we do. We live under the economic system that we do. And where we spend our money and where we let our money go is voting. It is voting with your dollar. And I think being in the habit of monitoring where that money goes is incredibly important. So a good habit to build. I think supporting local should be the default not the exception. When we literally need to buy anything, first question is, can I buy it locally? Not, do they have it at Target, right? So there's a game shop in Austin when I wanted to buy this game recently. It's it's called Friendship, all you can see is it's called Friendship Edition. It's down there in my, my table, but we really wanted to buy this game and it's basically a game of full of questions that you can ask your friends to get to know each other and all those sort of things. And instead of just default going, oh well, I can go buy that at Walmart or Target, it's can we buy it at the game shop? Does the game shop carry it? And I feel like that should be so much more uh, normal because we're seeing so many small businesses close and it breaks my heart. And I, I can only see on the trajectory that we've been on ever since COVID that we're leading to a future where Target and Walmart own the world. Oh, and Amazon. I just think that's such a good habit to form. And I think I'm kind of good at it. I think I'm good on that, but I would love to encourage more people to do it. I also think considering your local ecosystem and environment is really important. It's something that not a lot of people do. Even my friends who a lot of them are like sustainability minded, they are like completely unaware of what an invasive plant is, what plants around us are native, not working, walking on certain areas because of desertification, staying on trail when we're on hikes, those sort of things. I think just like by default, building a habit of questioning how your actions impact the ecosystem around you is a great habit to have. It's when you walk outside of your house considering things other than just yourself and being mindful as you exist as a part of the ecosystem. And one that I really wanna drive home is thinking about sustainability beyond zero waste. There's so much more we can be doing. There's so much more we can be advocating for and ways that we can have positive impacts on the planet and people outside of being zero waste. And I'll continue to talk about different ways that we can reduce our waste. I'll keep singing the praises of my favorite zero waste swaps for as long as I exist on the internet, but I would love for people to form the habit of not equating sustainability with zero waste because you don't have to be completely zero waste to be an environmentalist. You don't have to give up traveling to be an environmentalist. You don't have to be an advocate, an activist to be an environmentalist. Literally all you have to do is care about the planet and do your best and advocate for the rest. But that was the one I wanted to leave you off with. So thank you so much for watching. I would love, love, love to hear any of your goals for 2024, to be honest. I love to get inspiration around this time of year. So let me know any of your goals, but specifically if they have to do with 
environmentalism, sustainability, climate activism, all those sort of things, I would love to know, oh, and community. That was my word for 2023, and I think I successfully did really good with this. But anyway, remember until next time, do your best and advocate for the rest. Happy New Year.